Welcome to my audio summary of Lex Friedman's podcast with Walter Isaacson on Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Einstein, Da Vinci, and Ben Franklin. Walter Isaacson discusses the impact of difficult childhoods on the lives of great individuals, using Elon Musk as an example. Musk's turbulent upbringing and abusive relationship with his father have left lasting scars, but Isaacson believes that by harnessing these demons, Musk is able to take on riskier and more adventurous endeavors. Isaacson also reflects on his own role as an observer rather than a doer, emphasizing the importance of recognizing one's own demons and discovering one's strengths. Additionally, Isaacson discusses Musk's missions and his addiction to intensity, highlighting his empathy towards humanity. He also talks about the power of books to inspire and change lives, as well as the importance of visualization and end-to-end -end control in Musk's approach to manufacturing and product development. The discussion covers a range of topics, from the shift in mindset towards caution in industries like space travel to the humor and silliness of Musk. Midnight in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses the impact of difficult childhoods on the lives of great individuals. He explains that while a difficult childhood is not a requirement for success, many driven people harness the demons of their past to fuel their ambition. He cites Barack Obama's statement that every successful person is either trying to live up to or live down their father's expectations or sins. In the case of Elon Musk, his violent and psychologically troubled upbringing, including incidents of bullying and berating by his father, have left lasting scars. Isaacson believes that by harnessing these demons, Musk is able to take on riskier and more adventurous endeavors. Five minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson dives into Elon Musk's upbringing and the impact his father had on him. Isaacson highlights Musk's transformation from a scrawny kid who struggled with social cues to a taller, more confident teenager who learned to defend himself. He also delves into the complex relationship between Musk and his father, Errol, describing Errol's Jekyll and Hyde personality and the psychological abuse he inflicted on Elon. Isaacson reveals that Musk's mother and others have expressed concern that Elon may become like his father, and he acknowledges Musk's self-awareness about his demons and dark moments. Isaacson also draws parallels between Musk's childhood experiences and the different facets of his personality, ranging from engineering mode to demon mode. Additionally, Isaacson shares his own perspective, reflecting on his gentle and supportive upbringing, contrasting it with Musk's more turbulent upbringing. Ten minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson reflects on the differences between being a doer and an observer. He admits that he has had a fulfilling career as an observer, writing about remarkable individuals like Elon Musk and Leonardo da Vinci, but acknowledges that he has never taken the risks or achieved the feats that they have. Isaacson highlights the importance of recognizing one's own demons and harnessing them, as well as understanding one's strengths and superpowers. He shares that his superpower lies in observing people closely and writing about them in an engaging manner, while acknowledging that he is not cut out to be an executive in high-pressure situations like Musk. Isaacson's reflections serve as lessons for those with difficult childhoods, encouraging them to navigate their demons and discover their own unique talents. Fifteen minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses Elon Musk's addiction to intensity and his empathy towards humanity. He explains that Musk's superpower is not just being a good observer, but also having a big mission above the risk and drama. Musk's three big missions are to make humans a spacefaring civilization, bring us into the era of sustainable energy, and ensure that artificial intelligence is safe and aligned with human values. Isaacson shares examples of Musk's frustration and impatience when minor engineering decisions prevent the accomplishment of his big mission. Despite being sometimes ridiculous, Musk's epic sense of his role in helping humanity is inspiring. Isaacson also reflects on how individuals who have faced struggles and pain can channel their experiences to achieve great things. He acknowledges the epic view of biography that shows how individuals can triumph over adversity and make a significant impact on the world. 20 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses the power of books to inspire and change lives. He mentions Jennifer Doudna, a Nobel Prize winning scientist, who was initially discouraged from pursuing science by her school guidance counselor. 
However, her perspective changed when her father gave her a book on the discovery of the structure of DNA, showing her that girls can become scientists. Isaacson believes that books, whether they are comics or biographies, have the ability to inspire curiosity and creativity in individuals. He also highlights the stories of misfits like Einstein, who faced rejection and struggled academically but went on to revolutionize science with his groundbreaking discoveries. Isaacson's books aim to showcase the innovative thinking and resilience of individuals like Einstein, Doudna, Leonardo da Vinci, and Elon Musk, in the hope of inspiring others to think differently and overcome challenges. 25 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses the remarkable achievements of Albert Einstein and Elon Musk, highlighting their ability to think outside the box and visualize solutions. Despite facing skepticism and opposition, both Einstein and Musk were able to revolutionize their respective fields through their unique approaches to problem solving. Isaacson attributes their visual thinking abilities to slight handicaps they had as children, such as being left-handed or dyslexic. This visual thinking allowed them to challenge traditional norms and envision new possibilities. Isaacson also compares their thinking styles to those of other great thinkers like Steve Jobs and Leonardo da Vinci, emphasizing the role of visualization in their creative processes. 30 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses Elon Musk's approach to manufacturing and engineering. He emphasizes how Musk's end-to-end -end control and visualization of the entire production process sets him apart as a special innovator. Isaacson highlights Musk's insistence on having his designers located next to the assembly lines and factories, allowing them to fully understand the physics and manufacturing aspects of the products they design. By having control over the entire manufacturing process, Musk ensures that his vision is translated into physical objects with precision. Isaacson also mentions Musk's first principles thinking, where he removes unnecessary elements, like radar, from self-driving technology based on the belief that vision alone is sufficient for humans to drive. While Musk's optimism sometimes leads to missed deadlines, his commitment to first principles and end-to-end -end control allows Tesla to drive innovation. 35 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses Elon Musk's approach to product development, specifically focusing on Tesla. Isaacson mentions Musk's obsession with building a robo-taxi and the challenges of creating a fully self-driving car. He explains how Musk initially relied on rules-based coding for self-driving capabilities, but later shifted to an AI-based approach using machine learning and artificial intelligence. Isaacson also highlights Musk's willingness to change his mind and pivot as he encounters obstacles along the way. He compares Musk's approach to confidently exploring a dark room, adjusting and learning as he goes. Isaacson emphasizes the importance of being adventurous, having iterative brain cycles for feedback, and accepting the inevitability of failures when taking risks. 40 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses the shift in mindset from risk-taking and innovation to a more cautious approach in industries like space travel. He mentions that there are now more referees and regulators, discouraging risky endeavors. However, Isaacson agrees with Elon Musk's prediction that he will be remembered for real-world AI, specifically mentioning Optimus the robot and self-driving cars as significant advancements in this field. The discussion also touches on the power of words and language, the potential importance of the metaverse, and Elon Musk's belief in living in a simulation. Isaacson humorously suggests that Musk may have been influenced by the book Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and its theory about the ever-evolving complexity of the universe. 45 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses the humor and silliness of Elon Musk, highlighting how it served as a relief valve during dark periods. He describes Musk's explosive sense of humor and his ability to transition from dark demon mode to laughter by watching Monty Python sketches. Isaacson suggests that Musk's willingness to engage in absurdity and have fun is both a quirk of his personality and a fundamental aspect of a human running multiple companies. Isaacson also acknowledges the craziness and impulsiveness of Musk, sharing examples like his impulsive trip to a conference before launching the Starship. 
While there may be a desire to tame his craziness at times, Isaacson believes that it is intertwined with Musk's drive and demons, and that taking it away would compromise the fabric of who he is. Isaacson reflects on society's lack of celebration for the darker aspects of craziness and suggests that embracing the entirety of a person, including their faults, can lead to a more holistic understanding. Fifty minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson talks about a conversation he had with Steve Jobs during the launch of the iPad 2. Jobs mentioned that if he had been running Apple, he would have been nicer to everyone and treated them like a family. However, he also acknowledged that if he had been in charge, Apple might not have created the Macintosh or the iPhone. Isaacson compares Jobs' attitude to that of Elon Musk, who similarly believes in being brutally honest and not sugarcoating things. Isaacson reflects on his own management style when he was running CNN and admits that he didn't make the necessary changes that were needed. He highlights that many successful people, including Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates, also use the word stupid frequently. Additionally, Isaacson discusses Musk's approach to building an all-in team at Tesla and the importance of psychological safety and commitment. He concludes by acknowledging that different people have different preferences for work-life balance and that companies may need different approaches based on their stage of development. 55 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses Elon Musk's perspective on Twitter and his desire to make it more hardcore. Musk didn't like the sweetness of the Twitter brand and wanted something more intense. Isaacson highlights how Musk's intensity and preference for hardcore views influenced his decisions regarding Twitter, including changing the name and getting rid of the bird logo. Despite initial skepticism, Isaacson acknowledges that Musk's hardcore approach has led to new developments and innovations on the platform. Isaacson also mentions how Musk secretly bought shares of Twitter and considered joining the board, showing his continued interest and involvement in the company. One hour in this section, the transcript excerpt discusses Elon Musk's actions and mindset during the period leading up to the closure of the Tesla Twitter deal. Musk's behavior was described as mercurial, as he went back and forth between wanting to get out of the deal and believing it would be an accelerant for X.com. Ultimately, he made his peace with the deal and even hatched a plan to save money by firing certain individuals after the markets closed. The excerpt also mentions the consideration of starting a new social media company from scratch, but it is noted that building a new company would have been challenging due to the large user base and the limitations of blockchain technology. One hour and five minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses the importance of Elon Musk's ability to build and manage great teams. He compares Musk to Steve Jobs, who believed that the best thing he ever created was the team behind his products. Isaacson praises Musk for his skill in bringing in talented individuals and cites examples like Gwen Shotwell at SpaceX and Drew Back at Tesla. While Musk may not be as much of a team collaborator as someone like Benjamin Franklin, he has a knack for attracting excellent talent. Isaacson also mentions that Musk's hiring priorities are based on excellence, trustworthiness, and drive, and he has a strong intuition for identifying the right people for his teams. One hour and ten minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses Elon Musk's approach to finding the right people and promoting them within his companies. Musk employs a skip-level meeting strategy where he meets with individuals one level below his direct reports to identify emerging talent. Isaacson shares an example of Jacob McKenzie, who was given the opportunity to lead the team building the Raptor engine for the Starship. Despite his unconventional appearance and monotone demeanor, McKenzie proved himself capable, and Musk promoted him. Isaacson also mentions the importance of trustworthiness in Musk's leadership style and how it can be challenging to find loyal individuals. One hour and fifteen minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses how Elon Musk identifies loyalty and commitment within his companies. Isaacson mentions that Musk implemented a process where individuals would review internal Slack messages to determine if anyone had made negative comments about him. This was done to identify those who were deeply committed and loyal to the company. Isaacson notes that Musk's approach is unique and goes beyond what most people would do. He contrasts this with SpaceX, where loyalty is already assumed, especially since employees are required to live in a remote town like Boca Chica. 
Isaacson also touches on the topic of time management, comparing Musk's ability to rapidly switch between different tasks and topics to that of Steve Jobs and Ben Franklin. He describes how Musk can focus intensely on various issues throughout the day without getting distracted, allowing him to process information and make decisions effectively. One hour and 20 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses Elon Musk's time management style and its wisdom for productivity. He points out that Musk is a serial tasker who intensely focuses on one task for an hour before moving on to the next. While this level of focus may not be suitable for everyone, it highlights the importance of extreme focus and urgency in accomplishing goals. Isaacson also mentions that Musk's sense of urgency creates a vibrancy and richness in his approach to life, even in mundane tasks. However, he also acknowledges that not everyone is wired this way, and there are individuals like Leonardo da Vinci who excel in seeing patterns across many things. Isaacson concludes by emphasizing the need to appreciate different types of individuals and their abilities to savor success and moments of quiet. One hour and 25 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson reflects on the impact of individuals in shaping history, including figures like Sadat, Golda Meir, Steve Jobs, and Elon Musk. He acknowledges the tendency of biographers to focus on individuals and even distort history by doing so, but he also believes that individuals like Jobs, Musk, and Einstein play a significant role in driving progress and innovation. Isaacson highlights how Musk's vision and relentless drive have transformed industries like electric vehicles and space exploration, emphasizing that without him, the world would not be on the same trajectory towards sustainable transportation and space travel. Isaacson predicts that Musk's passion for his work and his aversion to vacations make retirement unlikely, as he thrives on the pressure and drama that come with his projects. Additionally, Isaacson mentions Musk's long-term thinking, exemplified by his discussions about Mars colonization and the governance structure of a Martian society. One hour and 30 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson, the author and historian, discusses the passion and future-oriented mindset of individuals like Elon Musk. He highlights how Musk's focus goes beyond immediate projects like building rocket ships or robo-taxis. Instead, his real passion lies in creating a factory capable of producing a million cars a year. Isaacson emphasizes the importance of visionary thinkers like Musk in pushing the boundaries and inspiring others to pursue their passions. He also explains his own process of writing biographies, which involves understanding the minds of creative individuals and harnessing the power of storytelling to convey ideas. One hour and 35 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses the importance of narrative and chronology in understanding and structuring information. He emphasizes the value of biographies and storytelling and mentions how these approaches were once looked down upon in academia. Isaacson also talks about his research methods, highlighting the significance of observing his subjects firsthand and conducting interviews. He explains that while gathering interviews is relatively easy, he refuses to include anonymous quotes in his books, choosing to cite sources instead. One hour and 40 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses the importance of listening and staying silent in order to get people to open up. He shares his experiences as a reporter and how he learned to ask simple questions and respect the silence. Isaacson also mentions that being naturally curious and genuinely interested in the answers helps build trust and allows for deeper conversations. He attributes his ability to make people feel comfortable enough to share their stories to his background as a newspaper reporter and his own personal demeanor. One hour and 45 minutes in this section, the conversation revolves around the art of having a good conversation, especially when it is being recorded. The guest, Walter Isaacson, mentions that genuine curiosity and an open mind are key elements. He refers to the teachings of Ben Franklin, who emphasized asking sincere questions rather than pushing one's own agenda. Isaacson also highlights the importance of active listening and giving credit to others' ideas. He compliments the host, Lex Friedman, on his genuine interests and believes that being interested in a wide range of subjects contributes to better conversations. However, he acknowledges the challenge of breaking through walls that some individuals have built due to personal or political reasons. 
Isaacson suggests disarming them by taking down their shields and offering comfort, citing his experience with Elon Musk as an example. One hour and fifty minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses the importance of authenticity and trust when interviewing and writing about influential individuals like Elon Musk and Steve Jobs. He emphasizes the need for honesty and writing for the open-minded reader rather than worrying about how the subject might react. Isaacson also touches on the role of romantic relationships in the lives of great minds, highlighting the different dynamics Einstein had with his wives. While his first wife played a crucial role in his scientific work, their relationship was strained, while his second marriage was more of a partnership of convenience. Isaacson suggests that sometimes what people need is simply a supportive partner to handle certain aspects of life. One hour and 55 minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson discusses his writing process and how he structures his books. He explains that he doesn't follow the conventional advice of starting the day with a hearty breakfast or writing in the morning, as he prefers to write at night and breakfast isn't his favorite meal. Isaacson emphasizes the importance of narrative and creating a chronological outline for his books. He also talks about the process of telling a story and using anecdotes to convey his message rather than relying on transition sentences. When asked for advice on living a well-lived life, Isaacson suggests reading biographies to understand different ways of living. He also emphasizes the importance of self-awareness and examining one's motives and actions in order to make better choices in life. Two hours in this section, Walter Isaacson reflects on his experience as a manager and his realization that he is not suited for managing people. He describes his ambitious nature and how he achieved top positions in organizations like Time Magazine and CNN, only to discover that it wasn't what he truly wanted. Isaacson then discusses the significance of contemplating death and how it can provide focus and meaning in life, referencing Steve Jobs and Elon Musk's perspectives on the subject. He emphasizes the importance of legacy and giving back to one's community, sharing his personal connection to New Orleans and his efforts to contribute to its recovery and growth. Isaacson believes that being part of a community and helping others is an integral aspect of one's legacy. Two hours and five minutes in this section, Walter Isaacson reflects on the idea of leaving a legacy and paying it forward. He references a line by T.S. Eliot about returning to the place where we started and knowing it for the first time. Isaacson emphasizes the importance of going back to one's roots and ensuring that others can have a similar transformative experience. He expresses his admiration for Lex Friedman's storytelling ability and acknowledges the impact Friedman has had on millions of people. Isaacson also thanks Friedman for taking him seriously and inspiring others with his stories. Finally, he quotes Carl Jung, reminding listeners that true enlightenment comes from facing our own darkness.